stream Lee Camp, the host of Redacted Tonight on RT. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you so much for your time today. Super excited to chat with you. Super excited to speak and uh, I guess over Zoom or streaming. Um, been a longtime fan of the show. Been a longtime fan Thanks. of your comedy and commentary. So it's really a pleasure and a treat to uh, meet today. And how's it going? I appreciate you inviting me. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, so I guess the best place to start would be to just plow in. Um, obviously, you know, we're just coming off of this, uh, you know, force the vote movement. Um, you know, it's something that we covered, you know, extensively at the Vanguard, this demand to, you know, withhold the, the for the squad to withhold their vote, confirming Speaker Pelosi in exchange for the forcing of a floor vote on Medicare for all. I'm just wondering if you could give some of your thoughts on that, you uh, you know, as it unfolded and looking back on it now that it's, you know, ultimately been unsuccessful. I mean, it's a bit needy of the American people to want health care. I mean, <laughs> third world problems. Am I right? Uh, so, yeah, it's I mean, it wasn't it wasn't successful, but I don't think I don't there weren't that many who really thought it would be. It's more important to uh, I think it just created a, a passion and energy behind uh, getting Medicare for all. And each moment there is to do that is important. And uh, and so I think it, it it was incredibly important whether the the, the squad or whoever uh, decided to uh, actually force Nancy Pelosi to hold that vote or not. Um, and something I've been talking about recently, which I, I think you guys ha have read my piece on it, is uh, is that Joe Biden actually, and this, this is coming from the American Prospect and David Dayan over there have done research on this. Uh, uh, Joe Biden actually now as president has the power to give everyone Medicare for all yeah. if he truly wanted to under Section 1881A of the Social Security Act. Uh, and we have actually done this in various places in the United States, such as Libby, Montana. And the idea is if an area has a uh, environmental exposure of some kind, then they deserve health care because yeah, that, they are all afflicted with problems. Uh, that was well, the what? The Most Americans have had some sort of exposure or another, whether it be uh, this fucking pandemic or it be the uh, the smog in Los Angeles, the lead contaminating the pipes in 2000 cities around the U.S., the, the, the oil spill under Brooklyn, New York, where I used to live, the, the Roundup herbicide carcinogen sprayed on all New Yorkers and, of course, many places across the U.S., auto-tune. I mean, there's just so many things that people are afflicted with so yeah and you mentioned that how uh the force the vote you know it failed but it wasn't ever really going to succeed anyway the, the you know even if it had succeeded we wouldn't actually have ended up with medicare for all and that's something that was constantly pointed to by its detractors and kind of the straw man that was over and over again uh seen by people that said like well what's the point of doing this we're not it's not going to achieve medicare for all anyway which is why i actually like your plan a little bit more uh being that the end result of your plan if it were <laughs> to be successful is actually uh universal health care um, single payer Medicare for all. So I think that off the bat, this is a good idea because people that might be skeptical or might uh, have been detractors of the force of the vote movement will automatically see the legitimacy in this right off the bat. That doesn't need to have that conversation, doesn't need that convincing. It's super straightforward. And of course, that idea is hashtag force uh, the executive action, correct? Yeah, I mean that was just a hashtag I threw around when I when I started it. But I I am more than open to ideas if there are more clever hashtags or whatever. But yeah, so I was doing force the executive action, and also it it forces even if it doesn't happen, it forces Joe Biden and the Democrats to explain why it is they don't want people to have health care, why it is they can't do something that the rest of the developed world has for their people. You know why it is that they want people in the middle of a pandemic to continue to struggle and continue to worry about even showing up to a hospital. I mean, how many people that get COVID or one of, one of a million other problems don't even go to the hospital because they're, they're worried of the bills they'll walk away with? Yeah, absolutely. And just to walk back a little bit, Lee, could you lay out your uh, plan and your vision and how you kind of came to the conclusion that we needed to force the executive order? You mentioned David Dan's reporting at the uh, American Prospect. But I also think it's a matter of, you know, instead of isolating these, you know, four, five, you know, seven members of Congress that, you know, overwhelmingly agree with a lot of what the left has to say. Instead, we can kind of hold Joe Biden's feet to the fire with your strategy. So I'm wondering, can you just lay it out for people who may have not been familiar with uh, what you're suggesting uh, before tuning in? 
Yeah, it's just that uh, I, I kind of glazed over it or, or, or quickly went over it earlier, but it's it's under section section eighteen eighty one a of the of the Social Security Act, right? And so your it, idea would be to force Joe Biden to do that, right? Uh, the, the 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 president can uh, basically give an area Medicare for all. Now, when this was put into law, I get that they thought, oh, well, this will be done for one little population here or there. It won't be done for the whole nation. But uh, I think these are these are crazy and new and dystopian times. And if there's one time to do something large like this, it's right now. And really, you just need enough pressure against Joe Biden to do it. And of course, the argument from the other side would just be like, oh, well, the, the, you know, the president shouldn't be uh, doing things this large with executive action. This should go through Congress. And yeah, but all that shit is just used to so that Democrats can avoid doing things. You'll notice Donald Trump, for anything possible, was not waiting around to see if Congress wanted to help him out with yep. it. Uh, he was doing everything conceivable. And then he would wait the court, you know, wait and see if the courts actually stopped him, which most of the time they didn't. So it's like, Go ahead and do it. And and if they're going to go through the courts and then at some point the courts decide, no, we didn't. We just meant this was for Libby, Montana. We didn't mean you could do it for the nation. Then fine. People will have gotten a year of health care out of it while you fight over it. Yeah, that's yeah, an interesting I, point. Uh, I mean, obviously, a discussion that we have sometimes on the left and here at the Vanguard, too, is uh, the legitimacy of using these uh, executive actions versus trying to go through Congress. But I think you're absolutely correct. I mean, we've seen under the last four years with Donald Trump that he's kind of ran roughshod over the traditions and, uh, you know, rules of things and has basically just, you know, as you said in your video, moved money around for this wall at his, his abandon. So there's no reason that Joe Biden. An emergency, can't. right? A, a national emergency because of immigration. Yeah, yeah exactly. The, uh, uh, ca uh, caravan to America was the greatest national security threat we'd been facing under his presidency. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, um, okay, oh, Gavin. That, oh, you're good. Oh, go ahead. Okay, I was just going to ask um, what your plan is to try to popularize this notion if you're going to try to launch some sort of like an online campaign. Obviously, with the Force the Vote movement, we saw the Force the Vote town hall where they got together some speakers and some, uh, you know, people that had real um, heartbreaking stories, quite frankly, to tell to reinforce this need for Medicare for all. Uh, but I'm wondering if you have any ideas of that sort other than the hashtag. Are you going to, you know, try to do anything of that sort? Um, or is this just something you're talking about? Well, I, I am friends with or in contact with a lot of people that were, uh, you know, the, the creators and the, some of the energy behind Force the Vote, uh, such as Nick Brana with the Movement for a People's Party and uh, Jimmy Dore and a bunch of others. And so, you know, I, I think it, I, I'm not I, I don't like I don't like when people take an I, idea and say I have taken it and claim it as my own. Sure. And so if if people wanted to get behind it, if it turned out that I know MPP has been publicizing it some, um, you know, if it turned out that people thought this was a good idea and really wanted to uh, jump on, then I would be uh, all for it and I would be there to to help and promote it and anything I can do. Um, so I, I guess that that's where it, what it comes down to. I'm not going to you know speak for uh, Jimmy or. Or, or MPP or anything, or, or you know, demand that this is the way things have to go, or fuck you, fuck everyone else. Like that's not how I generally work. So you know, if people like it, let's do it. Yeah. By the way, I did just yeah. want to say a huge thank you to the super chatters. Uh, the seeker says, "I would suggest to succeed, place the focus on the fact businesses will reduce costs of hiring people, more jobs will be created." Thank you for that comment, and also thank you so much, David. David, for your super sticker. Genuinely appreciate the support, guys. Zach, did you have something to say? Yeah, you know, I think that since Joe Biden's, you know, in his limited time in office, right, since, you know, two days ago, he's already sort of been difficult in his posturing on health care, right? He's indicated that he's not going to just go for the simple majority on uh, reallocating his or uh, for reallocations for his, uh, you know, COVID relief plan. Mm -hmm. uh, instead, he's going to try and get the full uh, 60 votes. I'm just wondering um what what kind of what kind of obstacle do you think we're up against right now in the left are you breathing a sigh of relief now that joe biden's in office in the time of this pandemic um i, I just was curious to kind of get your pulse on that more broadly no i mean there there are i, I think i think with biden you, you're maybe 
there's a slightly less risk of uh, <laughs> the American society collapsing due to, uh, you know, whatever fascist shit Trump, Trump is pushing. But at the end of the day, it's not it's not much different. Uh, you, you know, you, th this government is owned by a, a tiny uh, elite of, of corporate uh, sociopaths. And th that that's not going to change. But people think they can stop fighting or they can go home or they can go back to brunch because you have Joe Biden in that office, which is, is laughable. Um, and, you know, I, I even though I don't uh, equivocate when I trash Donald Trump and I've been doing it since before he was ever elected, I spend more of my time trashing the Democrats because of the, the way they lie to us, the way that, you know, they ostensibly say that they stand for things like health care and for workers and everything. But at, at every last step, they don't prove it. They don't act on it. They don't. I mean, the the one of one of the biggest funders of Joe Biden's inaugural ball or whatever they did. I know they didn't really have balls, but whatever it was, inaugural uh, event was uh, was a, a, a law firm that is known for uh, uh, f helping stop unions from <laughs> unionizing in work workplace. Uh, this is the guy who supposedly cares about workers. Um, so Brent and Joe, blue collar Joe. Yeah, Blue Collar Joe, it, 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 one of his biggest donors is a, a union busting law firm. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, the, the problem is people take their eye off the ball when you get a when you get a Democrat in the office, when you get an Obama in there, they say, oh, we've you know, we've solved systemic racism because uh, Obama was in the White House. Meanwhile, uh, police brutality just goes unfettered. The, you, the, the U.S. prison state, the largest prison state in the world, uh, just grows larger while we all sit at home going, isn't it great? We've solved systemic racism. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's incredibly infuriating and in some ways is more nefarious than a, a, a bright orange fascist in the White House. Um, thanks for your time today. We can't wait to see how the force, the executive action uh, demand develops. Hopefully it does develop into something. We will be covering it here and hopefully um, we can avoid some of the you know, really intense left on left violence that really ended up defining the <laughs> defining the force, the vote movement. Obviously, it became a little bit destructive. Uh, we can obviously discuss about whether that was a necessary thing or not. But hopefully um, we can maybe have a little bit of an eye towards left unity as we go down the force, the executive action road, which I definitely think is a good idea. And uh, hopefully we can speak to you again uh, in the future, man. Yeah, thanks so much Bye. for taking the time to, to speak with us. I agree. And I, yeah, I'd love to come back. Please uh, uh, have me back sometime. And uh, if people want to see Redacted tonight or uh, my other podcasts or my uh, live stream, all that stuff, it's all at LeeCamp.com. So. Awesome. Yeah, and we can uh, put a link in the bottom when we re-upload the stream so everybody can find it. Thanks, yeah, guys. Weird. Yeah, have a good night. Out, man. Thanks so much. And we've also included Lee's uh, website in the description and his piece that he wrote on this idea, essentially talking about what Biden can do without Congress, which is immense. Obviously, the power of the executive is uh, an awesome power and it can't be understated. And it's just a shame that we don't have a president right now that's willing to rise to that occasion to use that power um, to get shit done. What are you talking about, the Kevin? The new FDR is in rising. He is, when he finally gets to this COVID relief bill in March, before maybe they'll kick the can to May, we don't know. When he finally gets there, though, you are not going to, like, it's almost like, it's so, like, I don't even know how you could make a defense for that. Like, he's already kicked the can to March. Like, he's clearly uh, already planning on, um, like not getting the first vote passed with the sixty dollars. Or I said sixty dollars because it's Freudian slipping the fuck out of myself today. Um, but the sixty votes um, in the Senate, uh, he knows he's not going to get them. Um, so he's basically just punting so that his first like you know sixty days don't look like shit when he already is going to get a fat loss. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And again, I think that one of the best ideas with uh, or one of the best aspects of Lee's idea is that. Um, in the event that it doesn't work out, you know, um, we won't see a lot of people get super disillusioned and frustrated and start to hate the few members of Congress that we do have that are on the left. And again, I think that it's you're we're more than within our rights to criticize and call out the squad. Um, you know, we do it all the time on this show. But at the same time, um, I almost feel bad for them in a sense because it's not like they do actually possess the ability to, you know, unlock 
Medicare for all for the people. It's not like they have that awesome power of the executive like Joe Biden does. So I'd rather, uh, you know, as continue to exert that frustration and anger and energy against that pressure against Joe Biden, the people that actually have the power to do this, uh, rather than us just getting, you know, really, uh, like I said, caught up in this, you know, left on left war where uh, we're sniping down each other versus, um, you know, the common enemy, which is the 1%, as Gojira Zila said, it's the 1% we fight. So I think this, um, you know, strategy is is a little bit potentially more intelligently crafted. We'll see. Uh, and again, I was pro-force the vote. You were pro-force the vote. We defended it on this show. Um, but I do think that there's room for improvement. And I think there's room for innovation. And I think there's room to take the energy of force the vote and, you know, continue um, exerting it uh, as we go. So uh, I'm, I'm really glad that Lee is con con continuing on this um, movement. And I'm hoping that this, you know, catches fire. Yeah, 100 percent. And I think it's great to see that, you know, we're, uh, you know, nobody's laying down and dying. Nobody's throwing a hissy fit. Right. Like it, it, it's just it is like your wind and move on. Right. That's what it is to be on the left. Let's try and coalition build. Let's try and build some unity. Um, let's keep our eye on policy and let's keep our eye on the ball. Um, uh, because like, uh, Lee mentioned, you know, now that the big orange man is not the target, you know, it, it's going to be easier for the broad sense, you know, the broader people to just be like, okay, it's time to take a deep breath when in reality, there are so many people suffocating under our current system. Um, so yeah, shout out to Lee camp for coming on our show. That was super tight. Uh, we love talking to him and, uh, yeah. Oh. Um, yeah.